Hey everyone, my name is Perry, I'm an electrical engineer, and today we're going to be watching the Big Bang Theory to see how scientifically accurate the engineering scenes really are. Smell that? That's the smell of new comic books. Oh, yes. I've been playing Magic the Gathering, which is a trading card game for prop like my whole life actually, and every time I open a new pack of cards, they always have that new card smell. So, I get it. Look, I was going over the schematics on my zero-g toilet, and I made a teeny tiny mistake on the specifications for the diverter valve. How teeny tiny? It's gonna fail after about ten flushes. <laughs> but the mission is for six months. Yeah, see, that's the code red. It's kind of like a jack-in-the-box. No one knows exactly when, but at some point, something way worse than a puppet is gonna pop out of that box. <laughs> Engineering malfunctions will happen all the time. I mean, far more than anyone w would care to admit. Uh, like, cars will have to get recalled. Um, Samsung had a problem with their phones just overheating and blowing up in people's pockets. Uh, recently, there was like a washing machine uh, that wasn't functioning properly. This scenario is extremely unlikely because before a product is released, you have to really test it to in many different environments under various conditions before you actually implement it. The cars that you drive are tested to work in like negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit all the way up to like 150 degrees Fahrenheit or some really really hot number. Probably you're not even going to be in a car under those conditions but just to test to see if it works because you need to test a product beyond its limits or to where its breaking point is. So you really know how long it can function or how much you can use it before it just completely shuts down. If this mission is for six months and let's say I don't know how many astronauts are on the International Space Station at any given time, but if that toilet is like flushed five times a day for six months, it's uh, this. I would imagine this thing will get tested like probably 2,000 plus times for flushes, or I mean it'll definitely get tested up to the point of failure. And if that didn't happen, you can't release a product on Earth, so you definitely can't do it in space. All right, this is an exact duplicate of the Wallowitz Zero Gravity Human Waste Disposal System as deployed on the International Space Station. Don't you mean the Wallowitz Zero Gravity Human Waste Distribution System? <laughs> there is no way that he can just take government property and just bring it back to his apartment. Uh, even if he is the lead engineer on it, that's not actually his intellectual property. So they would all face legal action and this would never actually occur in real life. <laughs> it's hilarious. Now, here's an approximation of the spare parts available on the space station. We gotta find a way using nothing but this to reinforce this so the waste material avoids the spinning turbine. You mean so it doesn't hit the fan? I don't think there's any advantage to bringing that whole space toilet home. And then taking all the spare parts and like why, why can't you just take all the spare parts and bring that to a lab? That way you actually have more equipment to use instead of just your bare hands, which I'm sure at the International Space Station the astronauts will have mo more than just their wit to actually put something together. Alright, what if we use this 2 inch PVC to reinforce the center cross support? No good. I mean, it might work for the Japanese and the Americans, but have you seen the size of the Russians they got up there? <laughs> oh, I'm not sure if that would be a density or um, mass problem. I mean, I'm not really, I'm not familiar with how to match someone's poop to their ethnicity, but uh, that's, a, that's, that's an interesting problem that they gotta fix. Okay, simulated zero gravity human waste disposal test with meatloaf analog in three, two, one. <laughs> that really launched with some force. Initial testing of a product will usually result in a failure and then you just change one variable at a time until you can fi figure out what is the most optimal model for a prototype. They managed to take a product that works 10 times as it's supposed to to a new device that is completely useless. Moving backwards is not the worst thing in the world when it comes to testing because if you continue to put more emphasis on how to change one variable, you might have found the optimal spot at which that one component functions. So if you keep on like pushing that, 
then you might end up with something that's worse. So you know to go back one step to the point where it worked the best and then you move on to your next variable and start adjusting that until all the components in the device are functioning at their optimal level. Well, they've deployed our solution. Let's just all hope it works. I don't see why I have to worry. My career's not hanging in the balance. <laughs> Howard's career is not entirely hanging in the balance either. When it comes to issues like this, um, being the design engineer, he's not the only person at fault here. There's also the validation engineer and their team who's responsible for testing these products before they actually get implemented into the real world. There are so many people involved in the release of one product that it is near impossible to actually backtrack all the way and find one person to say this is entirely your fault. It's generally a team of people who didn't perform the way they were supposed to, and then that person's team will f usually face some sort of repercussion, but Howard's not going to get fired just because one of the things that he was working on didn't work, because it's not all his fault. This is one of the few Big Bang Theory episodes that really wasn't accurate at all. <laughs> Like, even when it came to them talking about the toilet, like when they were testing it, like you would be testing it well beyond that. Uh, you can't just take it home and work on it there. Uh, if something like this were to happen, you should definitely inform your manager or anyone that you're working under so that you, they can handle this problem most efficiently, which I don't think he did that. And his career probably wouldn't hang in the balance because of one problem he made over years of work. So despite this, the show is generally very good about getting their science accurate and their engineering schemes are generally on point. It was just this one episode that had to like equal out all the ones that are legit with this thing that's just completely false. <laughs> but the comedy was on point. I still really like the show. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have anything else you want me to comment over, just go ahead and throw it in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching. Stay fresh. Stay golden.